One can argue that one of the greatest moments of anyone's life is when they are initiated into their fraternity or sorority. The bond that is created between their sisters and their brothers, the feeling of being a part of something great, the constant partying, and quite frankly, the fans. The point is, there are many perks and issues that come with being Greek, more particularly a D9 Greek. One of those issues, perpetrators, or as we like to call them, perps. In this presentation, we will take an inside look at one of the most controversial forms of perping. You are tuned in to Sorority Brothers, the untold story of underground pledging. I'm a For over 100 years, the traditions of black Greek letter organizations have been prevalent to college campuses and the thousands of students that attend them. Starting with Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated in 1906, what is now considered as the Divine Nine consists of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, and Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. Despite of the various differences between the organizations, all D9 organizations exist to serve the same purpose, to exemplify brother and sisterhood, scholarship, and to be a service to all mankind. Key figures like Dr. Martin Luther King, Richard Sherman, and Maya Angelou have all done great jobs at setting standards for what D9 represents. Uh, I think mine goes way back um, because my mom was a Delta, transitioned to the Omega Mega chapter. Um, but for me, it, it's, it was growing up with a sense of responsibility to the community and um, a responsibility of how you carried yourself, not only intellectually and professionally, but as a black educated woman. Um, and to see it and to have to live it over the years um, was huge uh, for me growing up. And for me, I believe that when I got to campus, I didn't know anything about the Greek life. I came from a very small town, knew nothing about the Greek life. And when I saw the Deltas on campus, they were educated women who were doing great things. They were the leaders on campus. And I wanted to be like that. They were doing so much community service, so much in the Tidewater area, that it was something I wanted to be a part of. And just the connection, the sisterhood, the service, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a part of that. Well, maybe that's why sororities have so many perps now. Moving right along. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the first black sorority established by college trained students, was founded on January 15, 1908 at Howard University. Established by 20 courageous young women, Alpha Kappa Alpha has stood on the forefront of downtrodden humanity as it seeks social, economic, and educational equality. AKAs are known for wearing their salmon pink and apple green while wearing their 20 pearls. With their pinkies to the sky, you will never miss their famous ski we call. They are first and they are certainly the best. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get carried away. Like Alpha Kappa Alpha, Delta Sigma Theta has done their fair share of work too. Since its founding on January 13, 1913, Delta Sigma Theta has provided services of many kinds in the attempt to improve the livelihood of African Americans across the nation. Delta Sigma Theta is known for rocking their crimson and cream with their pyramids high and making their famous ooh call unforgettable. History shows how vital these organizations have been for the African American community. However, the women of these organizations are now sharing their legacy with their male counterparts. There is an odd new trend playing out on the campus of Tennessee State University. Instead of pledging fraternities, men are forming underground sororities. Out black gay men who want to become AKAs. At least one student has been suspended from his job on campus. Another student has stopped going to class. And it's all because a group of men decided to pledge pink and green. Now that you've had time to process all of this, let's discuss, shall we? What makes these dudes want to pledge sororities? Well, I asked a couple of AKAs and Deltas what they thought about the situation. I guess it's more confusing since it's a sorority and that's what like fraternities are for me. And so, I don't know, it just kind of confuses me. In a lot of ways, 
I don't like it because to me it's kind of on the same level as a female perpetrator but at the same time too I mean what really can I say The women that consider their sorority sacred are highly displeased with the way that men emulate their sororities. Although it has just not come to light in more recent years, Dr. Wanzo Hayes, a veteran member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, says that this has been going on since the late 1970s. They believe that this is completely ludicrous, and Naomi Ryan of Delta Sigma Theta made that perfectly clear. It's reckless, um, and there's not much thought being put into it. If you look at history, for sororities, uh, the founders were women. And if you go on to Google um, and type in, in sorority and find a definition in the dictionary, it simply says, it states a society for females that attend students or universities. Despite of how these women feel, let's not forget that there are always two sides of every story. The common question is, why don't they just join a fraternity? Well, we have to first ask, how does D9 fraternity members feel about initiating homosexuals into their fraternity? Honestly, there are certain principles that we stand for that would go against homosexuality, not in a malicious manner, but just to be firm, you know, as far as, you know, what our fraternity looks for in men. But there are tons of gay and lesbian individuals who are Panhellenic Greek. So what makes these guys different? Hello, my name is Classical Embrace, and I choose to stay anonymous in front of the camera. They said that I didn't have the exterior of what a man should be. They said I was too feminine. So they're rejected by D9 fraternity because of their sexual orientation and their appearance. So that leads to pledging sororities. So it makes it okay, right? There is a progression with fraternities that embrace homosexuality. Um, so I wouldn't use that as an excuse of trying to emulate of being a member of a sorority. Well, whatever the reason is, it's here and it's real. And if you think this is bizarre, you don't want to miss what's coming up after the break. You are tuned in to Sorority Brothers, the untold story of underground pledging. Stay tuned. Please have a seat. I'll be honest, your resume is not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. He wanted to be an AKA, an alpha, kappa alpha, uh -huh. Welcome back to Sorority Brothers, the untold story of underground pleasure. Before the break, we learned that being rejected by traditional D9 fraternities led to pleasuring sororities. But what about those who are part of D9 fraternities and still are involved in underground pledging? Some of y'all just think that little sissy punks and, you know, little faggots or whatever are, are members of Miyakas and, you know, Delta Gents or whatever. Um, but little do you realize some of these men are also members of Alpha, Kappa, Omega, um, Sigma, along with other non-divine, non-organizations such as Phi Mu Alpha, KK Psi, Gamma Beta Chi, Alpha Phi Omega. After speaking with a member of Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated who insisted that I not videotape or record him, stated that, and I quote, I pledge Delta Sigma Theta because I cannot be myself around my fraternity brothers. I often feel awkward around them for being gay. I don't find it flattering, and that's coming from me as being a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, because our whole entire goal is to 
inspire young women. But that's just it. That's the problem. They don't feel accepted by anyone. Naomi just stated that their goal was to inspire young women. Now, it doesn't make any sense to us, but to them, that's sex discrimination, and they feel that they have the right to sue these sororities. To sue these sororities. It's about black gay men who want to become AKAs and are not being allowed to, so they're threatening to file a lawsuit alleging discrimination and homophobia. Men interested in the AKA sorority, also known as MIAKAs, are threatening to file a lawsuit against the AKAs. Now you got these gay men, they want to sue the AKA for discrimination because they can't join a sorority. I really don't think they have a case at all, simply because our sorority was not founded and made for men. That's why we have fraternities, first off. And secondly, our founders uh, founded our sorority for women to cultivate and encourage women. It's strictly based on women, uplifting our women, uplifting our black community. And I really don't think males should pledge that. Okay, well, if they can't join the sorority and they can't sue the sorority, what's their loophole? Well, many of the underground pledge lines are now forming their own incorporated fraternities so that they can do everything in a legal manner. However, the fraternities are still modeled after the sororities that they have branched from. Same colors, same calls and chants, same strolls, and even the same history. In other words, they're fraternity members to the public eye, but they're sorority sisters underground. Maybe they just decided that, okay, I'm, we're going to come up with our own sorority or what have you and just be one with each other since they want to be a part of something so badly they just create their own sorority fraternity whatever they want to call it. One of my best friends is a little male Delta and if you ask him to spit those finals he will not hesitate he knows how many sides there are to a pyramid and why. I've been to probate shows, but some of these girls don't even know the info. But if their female counterparts are so against it, where did they learn all of their information and history from? Um, I, I think they get it from maybe they have friends that might be a part of AKA, and maybe the friends tell secrets that shouldn't be told. My name is Hurricane. I wish to remain anonymous. I honestly got to learn it from both males as well as ground level, ground level AKAs. Okay, well what about things that are a bit more serious? Every D9 Greek undergoes some type of ritual during their initiation process. Do they create their own or do they try to imitate those of Alpha Kappa Alpha and Delta Sigma Theta? When you undergo your process and the whole ritual and things of that nature or whatever, you have certain things that are directed only to that specific gender. Now that Miyakas and Delta Gents are forming their own organizations, either one of two things will happen. This will either help society become more accepting of it, or it would only further expose what seems to be one of the biggest taboos in the Greek community. I think over time, it can be looked at not as a disgrace, but looked at as an individual or individuals being lost. People are basically stuck on tradition, just like the women of Alpha Kappa Alpha Swords Incorporated. It's uncertain what the future will hold for underground pledging, but whatever happens, let's all remember that all they wanted was to feel accepted. This has been Sorority Brothers, the untold story of underground pledging.